Coming up on Retiring Well. How do we identify or are there some clues perhaps that we can look for to determine when it may start going the other way? But as a general rule, there have been, believe it or not, some pretty accurate um, things that, that preceded um, the last probably five, six recessions. Consumer confidence is an all-time high. Small business sentiment is an all-time high. Manufacturing, non-manufacturing indexes at this present time are happen to be up. I would dare say that optimism is at an all-time high right now. Retiring well, helping you make smart decisions with your money so you can live a better life. Today is the day you can take back control of your money. Retiring well, where we believe your best is yet to come. Welcome to Retiring Well. This is your host, Michael Reese. I am glad to have you with us here this week. Uh, we are talking about bull markets and what they mean and how long the darn things are going to last. This is going to be a great show because here's what we're seeing a lot these days. Uh, people just like you at home, uh, you've been enjoying uh, the fact that the markets, for the most part, have been going up, up, and up. And you might be wondering, is this going to last forever? <laughs> Come on, let's be honest. You know it's not going to last forever, is it? It's going to end at some point. The question is when. And on top of that, the other question is, when it does go the other way, how big of a drop might we see on the other side? You know, because you know, markets, they over time go up. We all know that. Uh, the question, though, is, well, they don't go in a straight line. Right? We all know that it's not a straight line. It's up, it's down, and, and you never know how long each of those uh, phases are going to last. So today, we're going to jump into this whole concept of, you know, what is a bull market? And what does that really mean? And how do we identify or are there some clues perhaps that we can look for to determine when it may start going the other way? And when it starts going the other way, that's when uh, you really got to watch out for things. Now, by the way, as an aside, I do want to tell you this. Now, anytime that you look at reevaluating or just maybe checking in with your retirement savings to make sure you're making smart choices, that your money's in the right place, this is the very best time to do something like that. Now, why do I say that? You don't want to make decisions when you're panicking. Right when you're panicking, let's imagine that you know, remember back in 08, I know it's almost 10 years ago now, but remember way back then when the markets were bottoming out and we were all freaking out a little bit? That's not a great time to make decisions. The best time for you to reevaluate where you're at with your planning is right now when markets are at a high because everything's looking good, you don't have any stress. Uh, essentially, you're best positioned so that you can evaluate and then make good choices. So I know we're gonna have a great show. Here's what I want you to do. Grab a piece of paper, maybe a pad of, pa uh, I'm sorry, a pad of paper and a pencil, and let's go ahead and maybe take some notes because we're gonna have a great show this week talking about bull markets, bear markets, and what you can do about it. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. to face today's retirement challenges? Are you prepared for potential market corrections and economic downturns? Are you implementing viable tax strategies to reduce your liability and protect your assets? Are you able to make informed decisions to safeguard your retirement savings and income? Centennial Wealth Advisory presents Mastering Today's Retirement Challenges. We are Northern Michigan's financial advisors specializing in retirement planning with offices in Traverse City, Petoskey, and Gaylord. And we invite you to an informative presentation with a complimentary gourmet dinner. Learn how to use the new tax reform to your advantage. The best way to generate lifetime income. How to identify and manage financial challenges. How to maintain growth opportunities and reduce risk. And much more. Call 888-608-5825 to register and choose the date and location that works best for you. 
Tuesday, September 11th at Boone's Long Lake Inn in Traverse City. Thursday, September 13th at Stafford's Bayview Inn in Petoskey. Or Wednesday, September 19th at Boone's Long Lake Inn in Traverse City. Presentations start at 6 p.m. and are free to attend with a complimentary gourmet dinner to follow. But seating is limited and fills quickly. Call 888-608-5825 to reserve your seats today. There is no cost and no obligation. Don't miss this important presentation, Mastering Today's Retirement Challenges. Call 888-608-5825 today. All right, welcome back, folks. Uh, as you can see, I have Larry Flynn with me, uh, one of the lead advisors in the office. Larry, thanks so much for being with us today. You bet. Thanks, mate. So this week, Larry, we are talking about bull markets, you know, what they are and, and clues as to when they end and what happens when they end. And, you know, people are really worried about that. Why don't we start off with, you know, so often we use jargon in our world. What is a bull market exactly? Good question, Mike. A bull market is when you haven't had a greater than 20% correction in the market in a in over two month period. Wait, a 20% correction you said? Yes. Okay, so again, correction, is that fancy talk for crash? Yes. Market values go down? Going down. Okay, so say that again, so a bull market means you haven't had a greater than 20% drop okay. in the market in, a, in an over a two month period. Okay, so the market has not gone down by 20% or more over two months. That's right. And so how long has this been going on where the markets have basically been going up? Well, a lot of people remember 2008, the, the credit crash. That actually bottomed out in March of 2009. Okay. And we have since now been in a bull market ever, ever since. since. And we're recording this in the summer of 2018. So if my math is correct, is that over nine years? That's right. It, we get to March of 2019 and it's still holding. That's gonna be 10 years. Wow. So is this like, is this like the longest that we've ever gone with markets going up or close? Where, where are we at? It, yeah, believe it or not, it's a, historically the second longest bull run. The, wow. the, the, the longest one we ever had was 1987 to 2000, 13 years. Holy cow. So what you're telling me is we're in a really long run here. Well, how much longer is it going to keep going up? There, there's a million dollar question, <laughs> right? Yeah. Now you'll have a lot of people predicting it's going to happen tomorrow, right? Yes. Typically, those are people selling gold or silver or whatever. But um, yes, it's going to run out. Everything's cyclical. You'll have periods of expansion. They're always followed by periods of contraction. Okay. So we know they're coming. The million dollar question is when? And are, are you getting a lot of people who come in and talk to you? Is this something that's they're concerned about that it's top of mind for them. Yeah, you know they, um, you know uh, anybody that's near retirement right now, they they remember 2000 through 2002. Yeah. You know the tech bubble, it dropped to half its value in a two two and a half year period, okay. right? They get it all back. They're it's 07. Now we get the credit crash. It drops again to half its value. This time only took 15 months. People are remembering that. They've seen periods like this before where it's gone really, really well. Of most recent, economy's been doing super well, right? So everybody knows the shoe's gonna drop. It's just a matter of predicting when. Okay, so question for you. What types of clues, what types of indicators are out there you know, what do you keep your eye on to try to identify, and nobody's perfect, sure. of course, but sure. to try to identify when things might turn and go the other way? Sure. Well, first of all, there's a, a, a million fundamentals of the economy, right? And yeah. some are always, sectors gonna do better than worse. But as a general rule, there have been, believe it or not, some pretty accurate um, things that, that preceded um, the last probably five, six recessions. One that most people pay uh, most closely, close attention to is what they call the yield curve. Okay, the yield curve. The yield curve. What is the yield curve? The yield curve is the 30-year treasury rate, okay? okay. And, and the difference between that and the five-year treasury rate. Okay, so it's basically a chart that shows different 
interest rates of treasury bonds, which is when the government borrows money, what they pay to borrow money, right? That's right. So, and, and when you're talking about the yield curve, you're talking about primarily the difference between the five-year point and the, did you 30 say 30-year point? Yes. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Now so what does that tell us? What are we you, looking for? Basically, it's just the difference. So you have a steep yield curve when there's a big difference between those two, where the 30 is much higher than the five. Okay. So for example, if the, if the, if the five-year is 3% a year and the 30-year is 10% a year, that'd be pretty steep. That's a pretty steep curve. Okay. Now, what has been a predictor of recessions typically 12 months later is when that yield curve is actually flattened or become inverted. Now, imagine this. Imagine give the 30-year rate being the same as the five-year rate. Okay. So in other words, you can borrow money for 30 years at the same price you borrow five years. Right. If that happens, that's an indicator the markets are going to turn. Right. Okay. Now, does that make any sense at all? Why would you give the, the government 25 more years to hold my money for no more interest than right. what you could get for five years, right? It makes no sense. Well, here's the thinking. The thinking is simply this. The reason I would do that, the only reason I would want to do that is if I had more faith in the long run than I did the short run. Got it. So in other words, you're thinking that things may be bad in the short run, but maybe better long term, right. right? And that's an indicator. So I know we're running a little out of time here, sure. but just quick question, Larry. Last question, real quickly. If markets drop, when they do go south, is it going to be just a little bit or you think it'd be a lot? Well, they dropped a half their value in 2000, 2002, and 2008. I'd say they're pretty drastic drops. Yeah, probably could happen again. Yeah. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for this segment. Uh, again, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Thanks, Larry. Really appreciate it. Do you have a plan for how to generate income during retirement? Are you going to run out of money? In today's marketplace, retirees have concerns about the volatility of the market. People have concerns that the traditional balanced portfolio strategy that advisors used in the 80s and 90s isn't good enough in today's new normal economy. There are more secure options available for you today, and that's what we specialize in here at Centennial Wealth Advisory. If you don't yet have a plan or would like a second opinion on your retirement income plan, please call us today for a free, no obligation, complete retirement review. Ready to face today's retirement challenges? Are you prepared for potential market corrections and economic downturns? Are you implementing viable tax strategies to reduce your liability and protect your assets? Are you able to make informed decisions to safeguard your retirement savings and income? Centennial Wealth Advisory presents Mastering Today's Retirement Challenges. We are Northern Michigan's financial advisors specializing in retirement planning with offices in Traverse City, Petoskey, and Gaylord. And we invite you to an informative presentation with a complimentary gourmet dinner. Learn how to use the new tax reform to your advantage. The best way to generate lifetime income. How to identify and manage financial challenges. How to maintain growth opportunities and reduce risk. And much more. Call 888-608-5825 to register and choose the date and location that works best for you. Tuesday, September 11th at Boone's Long Lake Inn in Traverse City. Thursday, September 13th at Stafford's Bayview Inn in Petoskey. Or Wednesday, September 19th at Boone's Long Lake Inn in Traverse City. Presentations start at 6 p.m. and are free to attend with a complimentary gourmet dinner to follow. But seating is limited and fills quickly. Call 888-608-5825 to reserve your seats today. There is no cost and no obligation. Don't miss this important presentation, Mastering Today's Retirement Challenges. Call 888-608-5825 today. Hi, welcome to this segment of Chalk Talks. Today, Mike and I have been talking about bull markets, you know, what they are. They're, again, just to repeat, they're when we have not had a greater than 20% correction in the market or drop in the market over a two month period. And now we find ourselves uh, historically in the second longest bull run we've ever been in. But I want you to, I just want to show you this quote by Sir John Templeton. Basically, he said, bull markets are born on pessimism. Okay, they grow on skepticism, they mature 
on optimism and then they die on euphoria. So, you know, when is that place that, you know, where do we find ourselves um, in these bull markets? I would dare say in this time right now, we're certainly not in the pessimistic mode. Um, we're not in the skeptic skepticism mode. I mean, consumer confidence is an all-time high. Small business sentiment is an all-time high. Manufacturing, non-manufacturing indexes at this present time are happen to be up. I would dare say that optimism is at an all-time high right now. So if I had to gauge where we find ourselves in this bull market, we find ourselves right probably about here. Now, when is it that we enter this euphoria stage? You know, by definition, what's euphoria? Well, we had a, had a recent example of that on the news with uh, Bitcoin, right? You know, it's kind of going up, it's going up, it's doing well, and then all of a sudden, it has a period where it's just skyrocketing. And then what was the corresponding result of that? We saw it drop, uh, drop considerably. That's kind of the way these bull markets run. You know, there's a period of time where you get all this optimism, there's built up demand, people are pouring in, they feel really good, and it has a tendency to kind of drive it up. We get into that kind of euphoria mode, and then it tends to fizzle out or die. Well, we talked about earlier about maybe some early signs of when we might be seeing that. Um, we talked about that yield curve, right? The flattening of the yield curve, where we find the 30-year treasury rate is matching the five-year treasury rate. Now again, how can that be? Why would somebody want to give me or give the government their money for 25 more years just to make the same thing they can get for five years? It's because the way uh, the markets are, are, are quoting interest, that they, they believe that there's more faith in the long term than they do in the short term. So that may be one sign, an early sign, of a bull market coming to the end of its maturity, possibly entering the euphoria stage. But we talked about maybe a second indicator that we want to pay very close attention to, and this is what we call corporate earnings. Okay? Now the market is traditionally traded at a multiple of its earnings. So if you look historically, the market is traded at about 16, 17 times its earnings. So what's that basically saying? It's saying that, let's say that the earnings for the most part are $1 per share. If the markets are, are trading about historically where they should be, then the market price or the sale of the stock in that market should be about 16, 17 dollars per share. So again, basically trading at basically 17 times earnings. Well, if you look at where we find ourselves right now in the present market, it's trading upwards of around 24, 25 times earnings. As in, in, if you look back at recent months, it was getting close to maybe 27, 28 times earnings. Now, many would argue, wait a second, maybe, maybe we're in that euphoria stage, right? And if you look back at the last 12 months of earnings, that would, it would indicate that, right? The thing about th this, um, this price to earnings ratio is that they're always looking in a rear view mirror. They're always looking back at the last 12 months and what its earnings were. If you look forward at the coming 12 months and what we expect those earnings to be, believe it or not, it's not trading too much off this. So let's boil that down. What is that basically saying? It's saying that if all the earnings, corporate earnings expected to happen in the market happen, the market's typically trading right now at where it's historically been. Is that, a, is that euphoria? Not sure it is. We dare say that it's probably still right here, maybe in that optimistic mode. But what does that also tell you? It tells you what you need to pay attention to. When you're listening to news reports, and you, you hear a lot, but when you're listening to news reports and you hear things like this company turned out less than expected earnings or and you start to hear that as a resounding theme among many different com companies less than expected then something ought to make us start paying attention to this that price to earnings ratio is this getting too high are earnings going to start because if you have lower earnings and the price of the market has not changed this multiple goes up and that could be an early sign that maybe markets or bull markets are coming to the end that me, we might want to make some changes. All right, we talked a lot about this. 
Mike talked about this earlier. Listen, when we're in a bull market, things are good right now, confidence is high. This is when we want to make sure we're paying attention to make sure we're positioned right. Because we know mar as markets expand, they'll contract. And that's the time we want to make sure that we're invested appropriately. Hi, it's Michael Reese here. I have in my hands a copy of our number one best-selling book on Amazon in its category, Retiring Well, How to Enjoy uh, Retirement in Any Economy. In this book, we cover the four big areas of retirement planning, income planning, investment planning, tax planning and estate planning or legacy planning. It has everything you need to know about your retirement plan and I wanna get you a free copy. So how do you get a free copy? It's really easy. Just call the number on the screen. Come visit with us. Come on in for a free, no obligation financial planning review. And when you come in to get your planning reviewed, We'll give you a copy, your very own copy, of this best-selling book, absolutely for free. Again, just call the number on the screen. I want you to get your free copy. I know that you're going to love it. Are you ready to face today's retirement challenges? Are you prepared for potential market corrections and economic downturns? Are you implementing viable tax strategies to reduce your liability and protect your assets? Are you able to make informed decisions to safeguard your retirement savings and income? Centennial Wealth Advisory presents Mastering Today's Retirement Challenges. We are Northern Michigan's financial advisors specializing in retirement planning with offices in Traverse City, Petoskey, and Gaylord. And we invite you to an informative presentation with a complimentary gourmet dinner. Learn how to use the new tax reform to your advantage. The best way to generate lifetime income. How to identify and manage financial challenges how to maintain growth opportunities and reduce risk, and much more. Call 888-608-5825 to register and choose the date and location that works best for you. Tuesday, September 11th at Boone's Long Lake Inn in Traverse City. Thursday, September 13th at Stafford's Bayview Inn in Petoskey. Or Wednesday, September 19th at Boone's Long Lake Inn in Traverse City. Presentations start at 6 p.m. and are free to attend with a complimentary gourmet dinner to follow. But seating is limited and fills quickly. Call 888-608-5825 to reserve your seats today. There is no cost and no obligation. Don't miss this important presentation, Mastering Today's Retirement Challenges. Call 888-608-5825 today. Welcome back to the show. Uh, my name is Larry Flynn and this is Art Canfield. We are both advisors here at Centennial Wealth and we're going to just have a little discussion about why big negatives hurt. Art, well, take it away. You know, I, it's pretty obvious. They hurt real bad in many different ways. You know, we've heard the stories time in and time not when somebody gets their statements and they see a, a big loss in value. Obviously, most people worked really hard for that money, whether they've saved or not through the year. Wait, they might actually see an, a, a, a negative on their statement. Now, would that ever happen with us? Well, it could, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I wish we During could the say, market. Yeah, I wish you could say that that was a guarantee not to happen, but we definitely sure. can't, unfortunately, do that. Um, but, you know, people worked hard for their money. You know, a lot of, you know, people may have worked 30, 40 years to contribute to 401k plans or save in some fashion, and they see those losses, it hurts. But really what this is more speaking to is it hurts your chances of a, um, a successful retirement or income plan in retirement. You know, the days that, you know, when we first got into this business, people had Social Security, pensions, and their savings was just the extras, right? Their Social Security and pensions met their daily living expenses or their monthly expenses. Now, folks have to turn this 401ks, these IRA into income. They don't have the pensions or may not be fortunate to have a big pension like many of the retirees of the past did. So it's all the more critical that they can build a plan that has generates consistent income. Well, when you have big losses, that's hard to do. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're right. I mean, we'd see people come in with a company pension 
and that would have a cost of living adjustment associated with it, right? It would go up with inflation, and then they'd have Social Security, which would, by the way, was not supposed to be the retirement plan, right? right? It's supplemental security income by definition, right? It was supposed to come alongside something. But it also had a cost of living adjustment. So wasn't it reasonable that for most case, most people, that would meet their income needs for life? Right. And then they'd have a modest amount over here, right? And that would just be there for future yeah. emergencies yeah. or whatever. But now they're coming in with everything in this bucket, right? They got Social Security, but everything in this retirement bucket. And then trying to turn that into a predictable and sustainable income that they can count on is the challenge, right? Exactly, it is. I think people are about ready to jump through the TV at us, Larry, we're about talking about a cost of living adjustment anymore. When's the last time <laughs> anyone seemed like a real cost of living adjustment? But, you know, the thing of it is, is that, you know, we've used this example time in and time out on the show, and, and I'm gonna use it again because it, it is all important, and people have to understand this, is that if you have, let's just say, 500,000 in savings, and you wanna pull an income from that, and you're, let's say, pulling 25,000 a year, so you're 5%, mm -hmm. and you have an unfortunate big loss in your portfolio to do a market correction or downfall in the market, and your 500,000 drops to 250. Mm -hmm. Massive drop, obviously, it hurts, hurts in a lot of different ways, but now you've come accustomed or need to live on that 25,000 because you don't have that pension or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, so now you're pulling 25,000 out of 250,000. It, it doesn't take a big math rocket scientist to figure out that that's gonna be a hard to do. Right. You know, you're, you're gonna see that's a 10% withdrawal rate, meaning that that portfolio needs to earn 10% annually just to keep pace right. and, and not fall behind. And as any realistic person knows, sure, you may get lucky and get one every now and then, a double digit year, but a lot of times they're few and far between. Yeah, is it true to Art that when we're talking about losses, probably need to emphasize it's the big losses are the ones that hurt. I mean, you can have s small corrections, right, in the market, and there's not going to hurt as bad. Yeah, most people, you know, when they're structured appropriately, can can absorb those those losses where they have, you know, a, a couple percent or, you know, everybody has their own uncle point, right, right. that where they right. feel is that is enough is enough. But, right, it's, it's the big 20s, 30, 40 percent losses are the ones that devastate, uh, you know, a retiree's income plan and investment plan and, and really force them to do things they may not want to do. Maybe those big losses force them to go back to work and something they never want to do. Maybe it forces them to cut their lifestyle. They can't travel like they wanted to or give the extra gifts to grandkids or whatever that may be, you know, mm -hmm. might mean different things to different people. Right, right. Well, thanks, Art. Appreciate it. And thank you for joining us in this segment. Um, again, we just want to emphasize it's the big negatives that hurt. Um, a little volatility is certain some, something you can live with as you take income, but avoid the big negatives. Again, thank you for joining us today. We appreciate it.